This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we have us a no heating call here. We got one unit that's too hot and one that's not hot enough. So let's get our stuff ready to go here. See if we can knock it all out the door like it usually happens. I think we can probably get rid of this. I think air conditioning season's pretty much over. It's uh, it 17 this morning and today it's about 20 something. So now next week it'll be 49 for a high, but hey, welcome to Ohio. All right, so I just got a rundown on it. So K1 here is the kitchen. It's now at 70, it's no longer acting up. We've checked our occupied heat, which is 68, unoccupied heat 60, cooling 674 and unoccupied 76. Uh, we went in there and checked the scheduling. Scheduling was fine. So what's really wild here is the fact that it's was up to 80 and knew that it was too hot. And then all of a sudden it started cooling. The play area here, it's 54 degrees. It knows it's not working right. It's calling for heat. So let's go up on the roof, see what we can find out. Uh, luckily they got hatchway here. So let's go on up here and see what we got. So let's go ahead and close this back up because that'll let crap loads of heat out. That there is concerning. Instead of welding the aluminum or galvanized, they just glued the, I don't know what they did. Anyhow, let's go over here and look. I can see already the equipment's uh, a, little t a little dirty here and there. Yeah. Over here, I would suspect from what I was seeing downstairs, this is uh, the Playland area. Yeah, I'm where you think I'm at. There's a bunch of them that we fill in when they can't get to it. Otherwise, they take care of a lot of the stuff. And if they can't get to it, then we will. So good old Linux. So we do have a code in here. It is a 58 of some sort. Let's see if we can figure that out. Let's go ahead and take the old backpack off, which makes it easy to go up the stairs. This is a lot smaller than what my other backpack was from Vito. This is kind of nice because you can see how thin it is. And the straps come off, so if I get tired of it and don't want to do it no more, <clears throat> it's a lot like the MCT, which is what I liked. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. But True Tech Tools, survival. 8% off, check them out, MB, 5B. So we've got, like I said, 58 code. So 58 is down here and that is gas valve one, not energized two minutes after thermostat demand. So they actually got current sensing, voltage sensing. Oh, look at that. There's the G76 controller. That piece of junk has got all kinds of issues with it. What's bad is I no longer keep those kind of controls on my truck like I used to when I worked for another company. You can see we're seeing W2 and W1. Let's come down here and look at this, which two-stage gas valve, one ignition module, nasty and dirty. Check rollout, it's not tripped. So let's go ahead and check our belt here. It's got the wiggle jiggle. Yeah, it's loose. That's nice. That's always good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and kill the power to it. Well, it'd been nice to be able to kill the power to it. Yeah, there we go. Optional on that model. Okay, so where's the break, the disconnect box? Yeah, you got to unplug the extension cord. What's the deal here? So we're kind of busy today. Don't really have a lot of time for foolishness like this. Let's take a look at the filters, see how bad those are. Boy, that thing looks horrible. Ugh. I can't imagine why, this is 07. So 2017 would have been 10 years, 17 years old. Power is nice and tight. Uh, wow, that is terrific. Let me see if I can take this apart. So this is a really, really nice thing you got here. You got, it looks like a split bolt with a crap load of tape around it. Blue wire nut and a blue wire nut and ground not marked with green. Fantastic, buddy, fantastic. If we want to shut her down, what we can do we can pull that off of the low voltage 
that's load size that's 24 volts it's one of them things where you know what you're gonna play dirty with the uh, disconnect box i'm playing dirty with the disconnection so that is loose as a goose that is working because it's a clog belt so we'll tighten that up and then we'll restart it and we'll see where we're at going over here this is going to be the dining room area that's kitchen i suppose there's another kitchen so best of my knowledge just got to be it unless they've got something on the ground which i don't think they do no there's no way we ended up loosening that up and this one up the lock nut undid it tighten this up tighten her up she's tightened up belts close enough for government work that should have been done when it's summertime other than that it appears to be close don't hear squeaking but visually it looks like it might be off by a touch we could always mark it for later and uh, go from there on that got the panel back together let's go ahead and reapply a little voltage to this thing may have to reset it on the control we could look at the infamous Linux flame sensor issues that they have these do not sense flame worth a squat diddly dang right there's that which again probably wouldn't be a bad idea to look at the heat exchangers motor sounds a lot better right now we're under just the g call tell you what before we waste any more time let's go ahead and look at the heat exchanger real quick okay let's get a good peek on this also gives us a chance to look down there and see that it has open which everything looks to be open Looking at the heat exchanger, it must have been replaced at least once or two or three times. So we're good there on that. Looking at the bottom, you got a little bit on the seam there. Oh, I got a little bit of seamage there starting to rust a little bit. Nothing split open, but you can see moisture starting to come through on some of the seams. I am going to definitely note on that that it's got to be watched uh this here where they've got restriction on the airflow that's going to allow that pipe to get a lot hotter which is going to cause it to potentially crack yeah let's watch that make sure that that's not got flame disturbances but for right now let's get it running if it doesn't have just flame disturbances we'll be sure to put on there that it's highly recommended that it be thoroughly inspected blah 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 cover your cover your mcmuffin and that way you're safe your company's safe everything's safe people are safe customers safe got the panel back on these gloves are the heavy duty these i've said this in my old videos but this is the first winter of 2023 going into 24 these work really good and surprisingly as floppy as they are you can literally work in them which is really odd but jerseys have always been that way let's go ahead and clean this flame sensor that has always been an issue with linux from day one going all the way back to mid 90s i got this new one here this one don't have the 11 16 has the 9 16 instead got this on my nasa trip which i'm working on that video uh it was a good trip got to meet a good guy named scott who works in our uh, hvac department and he showed me all around the clean room stuff like that so i've got some awesome video on that uh just it's a lot of a lot of time that i need to air, narrow it down with editing so let's go ahead and clean that make sure it's ceramic's not broke which is the only reason why you should have to replace a flame sensor yeah guys it's pretty cold out here um just barely i think 20 things i do for you guys purge motor just came on let's watch and see what happens down here see if we get any clickety clicks it might be sparking but i don't think it is i think our control module took a poop that module right there that blue one was total garbage i don't know if there's much i'm going to be able to do with that right now they put that in about the best spot possible for you to be able to get right in there and to work on it now how are you supposed to unplug it replug it you just can't okay what we're gonna do i'm gonna cheat a little bit here we're gonna go from the spark from there right to that copper line there and it should arc right to it no it's not gonna blow a hole through it and if you're worried about the gas we can go ahead and turn that off that way it's all safe there we go 
There's G. There's this capacitor, just like that last video, just kind of hanging in there. There it goes. Okay, we're gonna see if we can get some spark out of this thing. Should tell us what the uh, purge is. The thought process behind this is, is get it really close to something that's grounded. We wanna make sure that it's not working. We're just gonna have to dig it out of there. All right, so we got this loosened up and got it out of there. The little light is on right now. As you can see, it's not easy to see where I'm looking at, but we're trying to hear if it's firing or not, and it's really hard to tell. I think I hear some static, but I'll turn this on. It's just really not in a good spot to do much of anything. So we're gonna probably have to hook our meter on this to see if we can measure anything going on here. My thing was I figured the spark would probably be what failed first. Probably just do amp draw. That would tell us if we're getting power to it. When this fails out, it will blink. LED lights blinking. One blinky blink. In retry period. I thought I was gonna have to ground it, but I don't need to ground it. They literally ran a ground to it, which is kind of unusual for them. I think the white wire there is my ground for my gas valve. Yeah, it is. The main valve has a white. Yeah, there's W1. So we're on W1. Let's see if this thing will do a retry here. We'll go ahead and put it on uh, max. That way if we miss it, it'll catch it. Three trials, eight second trial, 30 second pre-purge five minute retry. Power's a red one, so we can reset the power. Let's go ahead and reset the power on it. I'm gonna do that. Can't record it and do it all at the same time. 30 second pre-purge, so you got 30 seconds before it's gonna try. So in 30 seconds here, it should try. You should see some clickage on that amp meter. I mean, face it, if we don't get spark, we're probably not gonna get the gas valve either. Spark usually the high, you know, high voltage discharge air. You're gonna have failure on that faster than anything. That's really good on my meter. Okay, it's been 30 seconds, nothing's happened. Let's go ahead and check voltage. Gray is common, brown is high. It's interesting, you use a two-stage gas valve with a single-stage ignition. So they must be doing it all through the controller up there, honest to goodnesses. Let's see if anything happens here. We pull that ignition wire off. You can do it. Let's go ahead and cancel the gas there. We'll see if it sparks to the ground here. Obviously you want your gas off. You want the power disconnected from the valve. You don't want to see anything bad happen here. Oh, there's a weak, weak spark air. Holy cow, that is weak. I've seen an itty bitty spark. All right, valves, the control's bad. All right, here's my thought process. So I'm trying to find out what the one, which uh, unit had stuck on. So you come over to these here and these got two separate burner sections and you're looking inside here and you're like, maybe I can steal a control module out of one of these. So this has got the older control modules. This one's got, has things disconnected leak in the indoor or outdoor coil not real sure we're just gonna leak and you're looking at some of the other stuff that's just kind of dangling there with a with a wire tie it's like what in the world so you're like all right well let's go let's go look at some of this other unit maybe we get a controller out of one of these other ones so you come over here and here's the newest version of that that's a fin wall and there's the same one we got which it's got an x on it so i don't know if that means it's no good but similar situation but here's what's funny it's 20 degrees outside okay we got a condenser fan motor running now i don't think the air conditioning running i think it's just a, a, con a contactor sticking or something but the heat's not running that's a definite 
yeah none of the none of the compressors are running neither is any of the heat and the heat looks horrible look at that burn section there it looks horrible just horrible and i'm not sure if this is k1 because i'm looking around trying to find designations on the units but they don't have any what a what in the world nothing nothing now i know that the manager that has already left he knew where everything was at but it was one of these two so anyhow my thought process is do we just go ahead and steal one of these controls i think i'm going to this is the kitchen area generally doesn't need heat you can see right there we're y1 y2 so chances are i bet the economizer doesn't work economizer it's got exhaust system on it it's nasty as all get out yeah this thing's all broken up and jeez yeah So far as the economizer. All right, so this thing's being a wacky. So we go over here, recall. Flip it over, recall, hit the button. It says 88. Does not say zero. Hit it again. I've already hit and held it to erase it. It says 88. So we turn recall back off. Come over here, and even though it's 88.8, .8, possible problem with the ECO chip control will operate on ET ECTO settings that's what we got going on there you can go for temperature here see what the temp is okay there's temp see if it reads temp right yeah not reading temperature correctly either no and then we can go to test turn on test while we're at it not working either I have a feeling this board might be going bad um yeah not good so these wires say power sense and some other stuff and i went ahead and took pictures of it of with my camera phone let's just go ahead and swap this out i think it's bad anyway just the fact that, that was replaced let's go ahead and see if it'll work so the biggest problem i see with this is the ignition wire super stupid short so when you get it loosened up to that point there, you can kind of jump it over to the other. These are the same units. Let's go ahead and just swap wires here and see how it does. Let's turn on this disconnect box. Okay, let's give it a sec, see what happens. Purge motor just came on, I heard a click. There it goes. What do you know? I'm not totally crazy, huh? That's what it was. Go figure, right? That gets some heat. We are running on W1. So basically what it's doing, that's going down there, turn on the main valve, probably most likely for low. This fluctuates the high. If we come down here and look at this, it probably will tell you exactly what I just said. But these schematics are some of the worst in the industry, so it's nearly impossible to read it. So there's W2 coming across, goes to a plug, another plug, and then theoretically it looks like it gets lost right there at number five. Uh, W2 may come up and go over to another jumper that goes to some jumpers and pressure switches. And the thing is the controller is bad. This one works. We'll go ahead and remount that back up. We'll give them a new controller. It's putting out heat. There we go. So now as far as the other one over there, I'm gonna go downstairs and see if it's okay or not. If it's still not problematic, I guess we'll catch it when we come back. There's there's W2. So now, we're, now we're kicking out some more heat. Yep. So I'll go ahead and give them a model and serial number of this thing and then uh, that there and they can cross it over i'm gonna even give them a picture of the new one all right so i went ahead and just copied her back over to it we've got it hooked back up that way if i lose the picture we can just swap it out go ahead 
go ahead and write bad on this thing. Let's call this done here on this one. So on this one here with the air conditioning running, when Y2 is calling, that usually forces mechanical cooling on. And with it being 26 degrees out, the snap disc would be shutting down the compressors. And that's the reason why it's running the air conditioners, um, but not really running the compressor. GoPro just keeps shutting off. Anyhow, let's get this module ordered and get out off the roof. Let's go downstairs. Okay, play, play land out there. Set point 66. So it looks like 66 is where the heat's set at. You know what, the kids are playing out there, whatever. So let's go ahead and lock this thing back up. Just check scheduling on it. I think seven o'clock area shuts off, which makes sense while your kid's out past seven, uh, whatever, you know? So, and it's set cooler because it's, they're playing. So you don't want them super hot. Good to go on that. K176, which, it's probably air conditioning is why it's on cool, cooling. Uh, K2 is at 66 and it's calling for heat. And like I said, it's just, it's running its butt off. Dining room one set for 68, set point 68. At this point, I don't see anything wrong. Occupied heat 68, occupied cool 74, run schedule. It's running for cooling fans set to on so everything looks to be pretty good all right so all this area out here is nice and warm i mean it says 50 something but i can feel it pumping the heat out and you can see the area that we're taking care of it's fairly high ceilings and this little area here uh, the sensors are located over here on the wall which we've got heat pumping out here on these uh, overhead register area all right guys so i just read through the task again k1's too warm it's too warm because the air conditioner's not keeping it up sorry it's not running real well at 20 degrees 25 degrees out i'm pretty sure he said it was going into cooling i don't know the guy's gone now either way it's pretty obvious it was too warm the air conditioner wasn't um overcoming the kitchen heat and the economizer looks like it's about done had it the top section's not opening. The dampers are about shot. Everything in the whole thing is about shot. All right, guys, so I've been going through the video here and going over some of the things that I might have missed. So what I didn't document was that I had undone the economizer motor and opened it up about three to four inches to help suck the outside air in. Going through the video and looking through some of the manuals for the system, now that you know I'm not on the roof, I was able to read up on how some of the system works. From what I see, it looks to me like we definitely have some bad sensors or potentially a bad control board, which that control board, from what I'm hearing, may not be available. So, because of back order, supply issues, whatever excuse they want to use. So, uh, we need to go back anyhow with the control module, and I plan on spending a little more time on it. But to get this video produced now to you guys, I'm going to go ahead and just end the video here. But I do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.